Welcome back to Season 3 of GradCast, Real Stories from UAL, where we divulge, discuss and even sometimes despair over life after graduation. During this episode, we'll take you through a UAL grad's personal career journey with the hopes that you'll be inspired, encouraged or learn something new. I'm Christine Safadi, your host for today's episode. I graduated from UAL about two years ago from CSM and I did jewellery design. So let's get started. I'm joined today by Mariah Turner. Do you want to let us know a bit about yourself? I'll tell you a little bit, but we're, we're going to talk more. So um, <laughs> I'm Mariah Turner and I graduated from LCC in 2022 and I now own a small business making funny hats out of used knitwear. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So how do you make the hats? So I source most of my sweaters and jumpers, etc., from Crisis, which is the homeless charity. Okay, nice. And then I make them into like ball clavas, and they're usually funny. They're like bunnies and flowers. I've even made like a house hat. So nice. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds really interesting. We should Thank see you. some pictures. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll show you some. So what did you study at UAL? Um, first, actually, I s- had two weeks in the international preparation for fashion course but I dropped out okay after two weeks because it just didn't really feel like it was for me yeah and I wasn't gonna be able to afford four years of university I could only really afford three so then I actually came back the next year and applied for LCC I kind of just decided that like fashion has always been something really natural to me it's been something always really close to me and I just didn't really want to be told how to do it yeah I kind of (laughs) just wanted that to be for me, and I really wanted to expand kind of my more like theory side, and I wanted to understand more about media and kind of like media futures and and also like website development and things and film. That's so cool. So yeah. yeah, that was what was great <laughs> about LCC's media communications. Yeah, so like I mean, it's quite different, like going from media into fashion. So how did you find that that transition, and also like the skills that you've learned in media? How do you feel that they help you with what you're doing today? Well. You might have to ask the second question again, but um, um, I think first of all, I never really loved fashion. I was kind of, I always kind of had like two parallel kind of things happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. While I was studying, I actually started making what I make now in like during my degree. Oh, wow. So how did you balance all of that? Um, Well, it started really slow. I mean, it it was like, okay, let me make some hats. Let me sell them online. And so that's kind of how it started. And by the time I had graduated, it had already kind of picked up pace, which was really nice, actually. But so it wasn't as much of a pivot. It was more kind of like I'm really wanting to learn about I'm really wanting to learn more about how the media works and how those things kind of work together because I mean fashion is obviously media I mean that's how things come out yeah etc but um yeah I just didn't really know much about the theories and I didn't know much about film theory or how to actually code a website so it was kind of just trying to like build up my skills and and write a bit more because I also really like writing nice so. yeah yeah I mean it's creative in it's in its own right as well yeah. yeah yeah nice so you're part of the accelerator program um so can you tell us a bit more about that as well yeah so I actually just heard about that like two days ago that I just got in um congratulations thank you so much <laughs> I had turned to UAL for a bit of like employability support but I realized I was actually on the wrong one-to-one but somebody told me Leela told me about the accelerator program literally three days before the deadline so I like crammed for three days straight to apply because it sounded like it was going to be a really great fit for me yeah and yeah I got an interview and I got in basically they're supposed to help me kind of build up my business and develop a better business plan and marketing and things like that Cool. Yeah. So do you see yourself continuing what we've been doing with your hats in the Accelerator program, or do you have like a different direction you want to go in? Yeah, so I'm using my brand that's called Miss Maskey um, within the Creative Business Accelerator program. So that is going to really help me, I think. Because what, like, what I've known so far is just my experience. Like, I've been doing this for like three years. Nice. So I have a lot of experience, but not to the extent of what it's like to actually run a business in, yeah. in the right way or the normal way. So I think this will really help me because I didn't do a business degree. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's the same with, I think, most of us creative people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always good, like, after uni to call it kind of, you know, learn a bit more about business yeah. and, and the finance side of things. <laughs> yeah, so true. <laughs> yeah. And your ideas, where do they come from? Um, 
I feel like it's all really symbolic. Like, I feel like it's always symbols. I think one of my most kind of sold things is a bunny hat, which is funny because it's, it's got this, it has such a symbol to it. There's a lot of, like, childhood associations and also other associations. Like, everyone has a different interpretation, and I think that's what's really cool about symbolism in general yeah. is it, it represents something different for everybody, but it for has sure. this kind of, like, transient way of symbolizing and making meaning for p- different people, which I think is really cool. And that's the best thing about art. Really. Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and can you tell me a bit more about your Creative Business Accelerator application? So do you have any tips for anyone looking to go down that path? As I said, I did do it very last minute. But <laughs> um, I think also in general to kind of keep an eye out for UAL, I think as graduates, we sometimes tend to just turn around and be like, all right, peace, goodbye. But I think we can actually rely on them and they can like actually help us in other ways afterwards but for the application I would say be really honest about what your struggle points are I think it's really important they know why you need it and like so for me I don't know about business planning or financial literacy so I was really honest about that I was like I don't know how to reinvest in my business that's the point of this program yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so and I think also just being honest about like why you like what you're doing and why other people like what you're doing and share things with them. I think they like to see that you're excited about it and they yeah. like to see that other people are excited about it. And yeah, and prepare well for the interview. If you got the interview, you know, just do well and be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a great tip for anything anyway. <laughs> yeah, do well, be honest and be nice. Like yeah. that's it. <laughs> So you were an international graduate. Do you have any advice for other UAL grads uh, who want to stay in the UK? Anything to consider to prepare for? I would say plan ahead. Do not wait till like three months before your visa ends. I was like kind of frozen by anxiety. Like Mm -hmm. I was like, this is really scary. I don't know what to do. I thought I could do some other visa, but I can't. So I finally kind of calmed my nervousness by making a really good plan. I've just looked everything up and planned ahead. I have like a month by month plan on how I'm going to get this next visa. I'm applying for the exceptional promise route of the global talent visa. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a bit complex and it re- it like requires me to rely on a lot of different people, which is a bit new, but yeah. um I think planning ahead has really helped me to like ease my anxiety and just get it done because knowledge really is power and knowing about how it actually works and how every visa actually works has led me to be able to like actually just do it Yeah, because that's what we need to do at the end of the day. Yeah. No, that's great. I hope all goes well for you. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And so how do you balance your passion projects with a need to make a living? So, you know, you've got your amazing ideas, but you also, you know, you've got maybe other things that you want to sell. So how do you balance the the two of those? Well, for me, it's it's quite simple because I think one of my passion projects I am making money from, which I'm really lucky about. But I also think that we should try to bring passion into everything and always like for me I only really tend to work in creative fields or creative jobs and I'm always just trying to learn like if there's something I haven't done before I want to know how and so I think like bringing curiosity and creativity and passion into everything that we do no matter what the job is I think is really important and another thing is if you don't have the capability or the time or the job that allows you to have that passion I think carving out a bit of time that is fiercely for creation is yeah. so important I'm sure like you know this too like it's so hard to balance these things but we have to be really protective over like this really precious thing which is creation and I think it's really important that we try to protect it as best we can 100% I mean that's why we went into the creative industries in the first place so yeah. you know it's always important to maintain that and to you know keep that going forward even yeah. with the need to make money yeah, hundred percent. And I think also just like advocating for your other skills and being like, I'm worth, you know, I know this, so yeah. I should charge you this much, and just kind of having a bit of confidence as long as you can back it up with skill. <laughs> it's like it's about knowing your worth as well. Hundred like, percent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, so what are your future goals or projects, and how do you see your career evolving in the next few years? Well, right now, especially with the Creative Business Accelerator happening, I'm really hoping to develop Miss Maskey into something that really kind of expands the industry and 
exist as an example of something that can happen that's good. I've been in the fashion industry for a few years now, and I'm, like, really disappointed yeah. <laughs> with, I mean, we know, like, <laughs> but it's it's really disappointing to see so much contradiction, especially when it comes to sustainability. Yeah. I think as a whole, the industry needs to have a sense of integrity when it comes to how we're treating the planet and how we're creating things, and, and also as a consumer, how we're consuming things and yeah. what it means and what it, like, what it actually looks like. And I'm really hoping that Miss Maskey can be this kind of, thing within the industry that says like look you can make money without you know without like underpaying people or without yeah without like compromising your values without making a bunch of landfill you know like I think that's what is like really inspiring to me is to kind of be an example of a business that doesn't go the route of like money 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 but like let's I want to like give back more than I take from my community yeah and just kind of yeah, just create something that's, like, really beautiful and gorgeous in something that's really sick and gross. Yeah, I yeah. think as well, like, the product life cycle, not just maybe in fashion, but in so many other industries, it's just not considered. So it's like oh we've got goodness. this product, it's out in the market, and then that's it. Yeah. Like, we don't think about, you know, the end, like, after it's used, like, what happens to it. Exactly. And I think even now, I think we all tend to be like, okay, we donated it. Like, it's fine, it's done. But most of it can't be sold. Yeah. Like, and so that's what I use with my materials. It's things that Crisis can't sell because either, like, the company left some, like, the security tag on it or, uh, or like, there was a tiny stain or a little hole. And so it's, it's like, the charity shops that we're giving to, they're, they're also intaking way too much. Yeah. They're taking so much. And that doesn't stay here. Like, it doesn't stay in the UK. It usually gets shipped off to another country to get graded. And then it gets shipped back. Or it gets shipped to Ghana for that clothing market. Yeah. Which is just, like, really complicated because we don't actually know where our clothes are ending up. And so I really hope I can make more of a dent in that. But it's really overwhelming to witness, like, going to textile recycling companies and just seeing, like piles and piles of clothes and a lot of it is like fast fashion and and like it's just like a sweater that somebody wore once and got rid of and it's so disheartening but I also think it can be inspiring because it's like we have all the stuff we can make things with (laughs) and we don't have to be buying new things we can like recreate things and I think that's really great because right now I feel like people are really coming back to that and being like taking back abilities like we're all learning to upcycle everyone knows how to upcycle and that's so good and important mend you know (laughs) yeah no 100 percent. so what what would you say if you could say one thing to the industry what would you say about (sighs) you know better (laughs) just do better i mean i it's like i i think it's just we need to bring our hearts back Mm. into it it's not it's like fashion is so beautiful it's like that's to do it's like it's living like fashion is how we live it's how we do things it's how we make things but I think right now, because we live in a capitalist society, it goes money first, and I think we need to put earth and people first. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because the thing is, I'm, this is kind of doomsday. Um, <laughs> the thing is, is, like, the earth is going to be fine, but we are making the planet in, uninhabitable for people, and that's the real issue. It's yeah. not people, yeah, w- like, we won't be able to live here, but the, the planet will survive and will continue she always has, you know? So, but I think, like, if we want to continue as a species, we need to do better. Yeah, and just <laughs> allow future generations to also enjoy it. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. I completely agree. Um, if you could go back to when you first graduated, what would you tell yourself based on what you know now? Mm. I honestly wish I could go back to when I first started, but um, mm. let's, let's go back to when I graduated. I think... Just have a little bit more confidence. Yeah. Trust that what you're doing is actually cool. Like, I think it's really hard to, like, know what you're doing is great. And I think for a while I was like, yeah, I'm just making hats. But I think it's also, like, the effect of people. And my abilities I've obviously made over time. So I think it would be to have a bit of confidence 
and like look at yourself how everyone else is talking yeah. to you and looking at you like believe people when they're telling you what you're doing is cool yeah I think when you get so caught up in a project it's sort of like you don't see it with a fresh pair of eyes yeah. and sometimes when your friends and family say oh it's great you're like oh but you have to say that yeah but, <laughs> but then I think you know over time like I'm sure with you know with your three years of experience you've had strangers tell you things and I feel that yeah. that would change your perspective as well like they don't have to be nice yeah and I also think it's I think it's also about like realizing that no amount of like actual validation will get you to feel confident yeah I think it actually is a lot of inner work like I mean for me like the reason I even moved to London was because I was like 16 and reading ID magazine and then by the time I'd graduated I was like or maybe it was after I graduated it might have been I don't know I don't know the timeline but I was already I was in ID magazine and it was like that was pretty validating but at the same time that's I was amazing. like it's, it's not like that great sad. no yeah that's amazing. I know it's like you went from reading it to actually being yeah, in yeah which is which is really cool so tell me how you got your work into ID magazine so uh the first time it's been in it twice now nice, but well done. <laughs> I think the, f- the first time basically my girlfriend introduced me to one of her friends that also is like a sustainable designer we were just all hanging out and then she told one of her friends about my stuff they liked it then they made this whole kind of shoot with sustainable designers and somehow knew about me. At the time, I literally had like 300 followers. Yeah. So like, it works. So it's just basically the power of networking. So just, you know, in in casual conversation, just talking about your work and it could lead to something. And like my mom was so proud. Of course, So that was nice, but I think it was just this, and she was also like really happy that her investment of the 20 (laughs) pound magazine (laughs) like paid off. Yeah. But um, I think it has something to like, I think there's something to say about like doing that inner work and how it coincides with our business work. I think yeah, sure. through the business, I've actually learned so much about how to be confident and how to actually be like advocating for myself and for my abilities. Yeah. And especially with, like pricing and things, it's it's so hard. Yeah. But also, I would tell myself to lean more on community because the community is what got me where I am. Like we need to rely on people and that's not a problem like it's really good to rely on 100%. people and like, you can bounce ideas off people you can yeah. you know you benefit them they benefit you it's yeah. always great to just be part of it and everyone's in the same boat at yeah. the end of the day and people want to help you yeah like I think that's a really hard thing to realize is yeah. like people actually want to help you do better and be better and do great things yeah. like people want to help and yeah and Most people like to see, yeah. yeah, I like to see people succeed. It's really nice. Yeah, exactly. I hate calling it networking because it sounds so like, like formal, formal, and yeah. also like a little bit manipulative. Like, oh, I'm talking to you because I might need you later. <laughs> I want something? Yeah, and and yeah. I I don't think that's how we should be interacting in general. It's another kind of part of like what I'm trying to do within the industry. And like this person that got me, Pia. Let's go, Lucha. She makes the sickest pants and everything else uh, trousers sorry guys um <laughs> uh but yeah I think it's just about being really friendly and kind and developing a community I think rather than trying to like build a web of people that you can contact mm. it's make friends like just genuine connections people that you genuinely want to be part of your community yeah. and I guess you know if it leads into something great if not it's you've got a community yeah I think the it's all about intention and I think I really was inspired and really believe in what Pia does and she's been like a huge help in the development of my business and it hasn't ever been like okay like oh what do you we do things for each other because we have so much love for each other and same with everyone else like in the in the business that I'm friends with like and even like the second time I was in ID it was I made friends with the stylist on the first ID shoot. Right. Well, let's go, Will. <laughs> William Barnes, W. Okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> um, Will is my good friend. We, after, like, after the first shoot, we hung out because I was like, oh, we get along so well. Like, let's hang out. And now we just get coffee sometimes. But he was like, he came to me one time and was like, oh, I have this really good idea for a custom. And and so I made him these customs for, for another kind of ID feature. And it was really cool. And it was yeah. super natural. I think that's what is really important is that we kind of intend to just lead with our hearts lead with truth and lead with integrity and things will sort of just click into place when you do that come on yeah. come on just be on just be honest like yeah. i don't know make thing make things that you think are cool 
do what you think is right and do your best until you know better and then do better. For like, sure. And the right people will connect to that. It's simple. It's simple. Yeah. Everything that works. Well, thanks so much to our guest, Mariah. And thank you for listening to our gradcast, Real Stories from UAL. We hope that we've managed to motivate you, inspire you, and maybe you've learned something new today. <laughs>